said to Paul, you know all those words we wrote are just the rules of the game and the rules are the first to go. Now I'm talking to God as Laurel begging party for a gun. I got a girl in the to be you better wrap yourself a little harder pretend the dove from above is a dragon and your feet are on fire i got a girl in the war paul the only thing i know to do is turn up the music and pray that she makes it through The keys to the kingdom are locked inside the kingdom, and the angels fly around in there, but we can't see them. I got a girl in the war, Paul. I don't know if they can hear me yell. If they can't find a way. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan. On behalf of our Associate Pastor Rachel Callender, the staff, the congregation, we want to say thank you for being here this morning. We want to welcome all of you who are joining us on Facebook as well. Thank you for being here today. And today we are continuing our series for Lent. It's called uh, Called to More. And today, Pastor Rachel has a message about what it means to persevere in this life that God is calling us to and what it means to persevere uh, in prayer through this life that God is calling us to. So if you are uh, joining us online, we hope that you'll uh, take some time. Let us know that you've been here. Uh, share the stream. If you're online, you can uh, register your attendance at medfordumc.org slash online dash attendance. You can also do that through the app. If you haven't downloaded the app, we encourage you to do that. And uh, there you'll find a daily devotional. You can catch up on worship content. You can also manage your giving. And you just text Medford app to 833-700-2226. If you'd like to make a gift to support our ministry, uh, you can use the app. You can drop something in the offering buckets if you're here. Uh, or you can uh, visit us on our website, medfordumc.org give. 
or uh, drop a check in the mail to 2 Hartford Road, Medford, New Jersey, 08055. So I have a couple of announcements this morning as we get started. Uh, we've been talking over the past couple of weeks. We have a new members class that's coming up, and we're going to be starting that on April the 10th. If you're interested in that, you can talk to me or uh, talk to Rachel. Next Saturday morning, our trustees are uh, planning a church cleanup day to get us ready for Easter. And so uh, we'll send out some details in this week's email about the time and the tools. But we want to let you know about that. Again, it's coming up uh, this coming Saturday, and that's going to be in the morning. So uh, keep an eye for the details. Also, you're invited uh, to a mission project that we have uh, started here over the past uh, several months. We've been delivering food from Wawa. It's leftover food and taking it to uh, the Christian Caring Center in uh, Browns Mills. And so if you are interested in helping with this, it happens on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. It also, uh, we'd like to expand it to Friday mornings as well. And so it's uh, just a couple hours commitment uh, from 9.30 a.m. to about 11 o'clock a.m. And uh, you can reach out. I'm not sure if Kathy Whitaker is here in this room today, but um, you can reach out and uh, touch base with her. You can touch base with me or Rachel or uh, the, certainly uh, the church office as well. And we'll put you in touch with Kathy Whitaker, who's managing uh, that ministry. And then finally, uh, we have an update from the Easter Food Drive Network, and here it is. I see prayers going up from the, uh, from the uh, tech room up there, so let's see what happens. Good morning, food fans. Once again, this is Timmy Carl, and welcome to Food Center with a March Madness Food Drive update. We are starting today's report with a few thank yous. Thank you to everyone who has started to bring in food and toiletry items. Thank you to everyone who has made a monetary donation to the church. And thank you to all the youth volunteers who showed up last Sunday to help count, sort, and pack the items. Now, over to Outreach Chair Chris Carl with a scoring update. As of Sunday, March 20th, the scoring is as follows. Well, there's no Coach Special K magic with the Pittsburgh Boxers. They are currently in fourth place with a pathetic 121 points. In third place, it's the toiletries from Arbor State with a meager 136 points. In second place, it's the Buccaneers from George Mason Jar University with 137 points. And our current leader, the Gift Cards, with a terrible 165 points in the form of 11 Acme Gift Cards. Okay, okay, settle down everyone. While the scores are really close, they are also really low. We are optimistic that we will see much higher scores in our next update. So let's keep those donations coming. Thanks for the update, Dad. And in other news... But wait, there's more. We also have a monetary donation update. Whether you contributed here at church, through the website, or through our app, we have a current total of $1,450. These donations are not reflected in our food, toiletry, and gift card totals this week. So thank you again to everyone who has donated so far. We will still be collecting food, toiletry items, gift cards, and monetary donations through Sunday, April 10th. Aren't you the one that gets on my case for interrupting? Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Sheesh, the things I put up with. Anyways, Medford UMC, you know the drill by now. Drop off your donations today in the Narthex or the FLC lobby and make your monetary donations by check or through push pay. If you drop anything off through the week, please leave it on the pew outside the church office. It's time to make a full court press. And we desperately need everyone to step up and help the families served by the Christian Caring Center and the Turning Point UMC Food Pantry. For Chris Carl, the MUMC Youth, 
the Outreach Committee, and all of us here at EFDN, the Easter Food Drive Network, I am Timmy Carl signing off. Joe and Rachel, that's all I got. So it sounds like we're making good progress. I know that uh, the, the numbers of items were low, but we're really excited about the gifts that have poured in. And so we thank you for your support of this project and I look forward to reporting the totals as we continue on. So now let's settle into a moment of, uh, of worship and prayer. I invite you to join me as we pray together this opening prayer. We love you, Lord. We gather praying that this will be a time set apart from the world to be renewed and restored. Even when the demands of the world call us away from you, help us remain grounded in you. By the strength of your spirit, help us pursue the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. Amen. Nate? Thank you, Joe. Good morning, everyone. It is so great to worship with you today. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able, and let's lift our voices, lift our hearts to the Lord this morning.
seated. Want to come talk for a couple minutes? Yeah, you want to come up here? Today I got smart. I brought a chair. You know, they, they make these chairs. They're amazing. Come up here. We sit on the floor. How are you guys today? It's good to see you. So I was thinking about uh, something today. So do you ever pray? Do you guys ever pray? Do any of you ever pray? Yeah. What time, when do you pray? When do you guys pray? You pray at night, like before you go to bed. That's a pretty common time to pray, right? A lot of us do. Good morning. So do you pray maybe before you eat, eat, eat something? Like maybe before you have meals sometimes, right? Before you have dinner. Um, do any of you pray when you get up in the morning? Can you say a prayer when you get up in the morning? When do you pray? Aha, uh-huh. so you sing a song and then you pray. That's wonderful. Yeah, what about you? At dinner and at bedtime? Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, these are all really good times to pray. Now, is it hard or easy to pray? Do you, do you sometimes feel like you don't know, necessarily know the right words to say? Does that ever happen to you? Does that ever happen to you? You don't know the... No? It never happens to you? That's great. That's wonderful. So, um, sometimes I think, and this happens for adults, too. This happens for grown-ups, right? We come to church, and we read a prayer, and maybe the prayer is up on the screen, or the prayer is printed somewhere, and we think that we have to have um, special words in order to pray. But I think that one of the things that I would say is... You know, Jesus, when we read stories about Jesus in the Bible, what we find is that Jesus goes out sometimes. He, like, leaves his disciples, and he walks away from them, and he finds a spot, like, off somewhere where he can pray by himself. And sometimes he prays all night. How many words do you think it would take to pray all night? A lot, right? It would take a lot of words if you wanted to pray all night and you wanted to use words the whole time, right? Sometimes our prayers don't have to have any words at all, right? Sometimes our prayers can just be us, like, just thinking about God, right? Sometimes our prayers can just be us trying to find a place where we can um, just experience a little peace, right? Sometimes that's really important. But if you need words... This is what I was thinking today. I think that there, there are all these different ways to pray. Like five, you can use five fingers. You can look these up. You can use something called acts. You know, your parents can look these up. But I think for us today, I'd like to just say, if there are two things you do when you pray, that would be great. Okay? One is say thank you, Right? So we, when we pray, we say thank you. That's what grace is about, right? When we say grace before we eat, we're saying thank you. So say thank you. And then if you are praying for someone or something, then you can ask, right? So we ask and we give thanks, right? It can be that simple. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bet she does. So I bet all of your parents pray thanks for all of you, right? And I give thanks for all of you today. So let's take a minute. Let's pray together, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you for all of our friends who are gathered around here today. We give you thanks for their families and for their faith. And we just pray that as, um, as we are here before you, that you never um, let the words we use in prayer to stand in the way of us praying. God, help us always to know that no matter what words we use, that you hear us and that you love us and that you just want to talk to us. And so help us to want to talk to you too. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you see that? So I said thanks, and I asked for something, right? So it's that easy. All right, well, it's really good to see you today. And uh, Ms. (laughs) I'm sorry, Ms. Roswald is here today. Mrs. Carl is uh, taking a little vacation today. So I hope that you can hang out with Mrs. Roswell or Miss Roswell. Oh, Miss Kelsey. Miss Kelsey. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Sorry, Miss Kelsey. All right.
Good morning. All right, the scripture reading today is from 1st Mark, verses 35 to 39. Early in the morning, well before sunrise, Jesus rose and went to a deserted place where he could be alone in prayer. Simon and those with him tracked him down. When they found him, they told him, everyone's looking for you. He replied, let's head in the other direction to the nearby villages so that I can preach there too. That's why I've come. He traveled out throughout Galilee, preaching in, in their synagogues and throwing out demons. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer. Holy God, we ask that your word come alive for us today. We ask that it digs its way into our very cells and makes a home. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of my hearts be pleasing to you, God, now and forever. Amen. Let me know if you've ever had the same day that I've relived like Groundhog Day so many days in my life. You wake up and today's the day. Today is the day that you said that you were going to drop that habit. Maybe it's about eating healthier or exercising more. Uh, or maybe it's a more specific habit. Maybe it's biting nails or chewing on pencils, whatever it may be. But today is that day, and you start off strong. You have your bowl of oatmeal. You go for your walk. But the day somehow gets away from you. Work was fire after fire to put out. Your house is a total wreck. A family member needs a lot of attention for some reason. There isn't enough time to even hear yourself think, let alone just be by yourself for a second. And by the time the evening rolls around, it's easy to justify breaking your goal, justifying that your exhaustion entitles you to whatever your bad habit is. You deserve this for what you have to put up with. And, and hey, once you've broken it, you might as well just really break it, right? Maybe you'll try again tomorrow, maybe next week, Maybe next month. And I was a little weary of using this kind of example for a topic about sin because I don't want to make it sound like eating the cupcake or chewing on your cuticles is a sin. It's not. You can eat the cupcake, right? But the point is, is that exhaustion is a very slippery slope. When exhaustion overtakes us, it's a lot easier to justify being rude to a cashier or short with a loved one or just not having the time to grow in relationship with God. Who's got time for that, right? I'm exhausted. In today's short text, we see Jesus after a very busy time in his life. Our gospel writer Mark gets right to the meat of the story. John baptized Jesus. Jesus then spent 40 days wandering the wilderness, being tempted by the adversary. He's preaching while his cousin gets arrested. He's traveling, and he's preaching, and he's gaining disciples. He's healing and exercising demons. He's headed back off his journey to help Simon's ill mother-in-law. He heads back into his journey to preach and to heal and make up for lost time. His popularity has grown so much that crowds are forming for his healing. He's staying up till all hours of the night trying to help others. And then this text comes in. Jesus wakes up while everyone else is still sleeping and wanders off by himself to a place of isolation and prays. I know sometimes we can get frustrated by the details that scripture leaves out, but we can also gain a lot of curiosity in what the writers decide to put in. Why? Amongst all the ministry and preaching and healing, all with very little detail, it's like a sentence about each thing. Why bother to note Jesus praying by himself early in the morning? I didn't make a Facebook post this morning about my pre-worship prayers, no one cares, right? This guy had to have been praying all the time. Why does this matter? Something must have been out of the ordinary. Exhaustion. Exhaustion wreaks havoc on one's mind, body, and soul. God doesn't give the gift of Sabbath just for fun. It's serious business. Though we've all experienced exhaustion many times in our life, if you're anything like me, you've been responding to, hey, how are you, with exhausted a lot more often lately. I'm exhausted, we're exhausted, Jesus was exhausted. We're really seeing his fully human part amongst 
all this magnificent, fully divine ministry and miracles that he's doing. He does something extremely human. He tries to hear his own thoughts, even if just for a moment, he takes the time to pray. We know that Jesus is without sin, but it doesn't mean that he is without the desire to sin. And we see him going to God to help him keep himself from sinning. So this morning, as we continue this Call to More series about wrestling with sin, we're looking at the choice exhaustion gives us each day. To fall back into the bad habits or sinful ways, just because we're exhausted, or to turn to God to persevere through to a life that we never imagined that we could have. When things get overwhelming and stressful, it's easy to slip back into living the ways that aren't really good for us. It's easy to just shrug and be like, it's all I have to give, right? Even when we know it's not the full life that God is calling us into, our sinful habits can even become coping mechanisms for that endless cycle that is, life is hard, so I do this bad habit, even though it'll make life harder, then life is harder, so I keep doing that bad habit, and so on and so on. The very thing that we try to patch up our wounds with creates more wounds. The first part of this is naming the bad habits that we have, that we lean on when life gets tough, and singling out the behaviors that we fall into when we're tired and just done. I really want you today, right now, to think about what that comfort zone habit is. Not only about you, but I find a lot of reassurance in Jesus being exhausted. And seeing Jesus needs some me time in order to keep moving forward. I find comfort in the idea of his turning to prayer, turning to God to help him keep him from temptation. And I can't help but think about this very human emotion. What other very human emotions must he be experiencing here besides exhaustion that he's trying to fight off? Maybe the crowds and the fame was getting to him and he needs prayer to remind him of the ministry, not the attention. Last summer, when we were doing our series on joy, I preached about Christian perfection, scary word perfection, right? And in the text, I use Paul's writing to the people of Philippi, this, this text. It's not that I have already preached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ, Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me, and I reach for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is a prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus, so all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will re reveal it to him or her. Only let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. Back when I preached on this powerful text, I talked about Christian perfection actually being about being made perfect in love and how it's less about achieving a goal and more about pursuing that goal, trying to be closer to a pure heart like Christ each day and not letting the days that we fail stop us. It's not being without doing wrong, but with a heart set on always trying to get it right even when we do get it wrong. In relation to today's thought, this text encourages us not to allow sin in our lives, to, to rule our lives, both past and present, to keep us from pursuing that perfection in love. Instead of just succumbing to it, we can actively fight against it and say, this is really hard, right? And I need God to do it, but I won't give in, I refuse, even when I'm exhausted. Our conversion, our moments of grace and peace and spirit, they don't cure sin. It's still there once those moments are gone. The stress and the exhaustion of his work was there for Jesus that very same day, right? Once the sun rose. But through prayer, through centering, through acknowledging our need for God's help, we can move forward instead of backward. And I think it would also be really smart of us to recognize one other significant thing that Jesus does here. The text says, Simon and those with him tracked him down, and when they found him, they said, everyone's looking for you. He replied, let's head in the other direction. 
to the nearby villages so that I can preach there too. That's why I've come. And he traveled to Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and throwing out demons. The disciples have an agenda, right? And Jesus threw them off by wandering away. Spent all morning looking for him. And now they want Jesus to go back to where he was brought to the brink of exhaustion, back to Capernaum, but Jesus insists otherwise. He's setting a boundary and is saying that they need to keep moving forward. They can't go back. Boundaries are essential for us moving beyond our bad habits and our sins. They're the only way that we can create new habits. As we find ourselves in the second half of this Lent series, wherever your fasting or discipline may be, even if it's not very far, right? You can give yourself some grace for that as we end towards a celebration of the resurrection from sin and death, maybe really hold closely that very idea of being resurrected from our sins, of not allowing them to make us someone God isn't calling us to be and who we don't want to really be. Let us live each day remembering that resurrection can live within us even when we are just exhausted. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, we are tired, and we ask for your energy to keep our eyes forward instead of back from your Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit guide that forward thinking. May our prayers and our worship and our fellowship call us into the deeper lives that you long for us this day. Amen.
Amen. What a powerful name it is. So friends, as we uh, prepare to move into this time um, where we think about uh, our offering and think about giving to the church, we do have some new folks coming to church recently, and um, I'm just really grateful for all of you. But even if you've been around here for a while, you might um, not understand some of the funds that we use in order to uh, take care of different needs and priorities within our ministry. And so I just want to talk for a minute uh, to give a little bit of clarification around some of that. When you go into, uh, for example, the uh, drop-down list, when you go to our website or you go into the app and you see the different areas where you can give, the first and the most important uh, area is the general fund. And that provides, as you might guess, kind of for general operations. That's the kind of unrestricted fund that we use to fund most of our work. And that uh, takes care of things like salaries and programs and utilities and those types of expenses. The second is something called the building fund. And the building fund provides for the upkeep and for the improvement of our properties. So we own uh, two buildings here. We have two parsonages as well. And so the building fund uh, helps us to maintain all of those properties. And then the third is the family life center fund. And that's designated exclusively to pay the mortgage on this building. So we do have a mortgage on this building. And um, we are grateful for your support for that fund as well. So those three, the general, the building, and uh, the Family Life Center Fund, really constitute the biggest uh, areas uh, that people can support uh, within the church. But whichever funds you choose to support, we thank you for your generosity. And if you, again, if you'd like to make a gift today, you can go to our website, you can use the app, you can drop something in the offering plate. And just note that if you want to make a gift uh, to the different funds uh, through a recurring kind of setup through the website or through the app, you do have to make uh, individual transactions, individual recurring transactions for each one of those funds that you want to support. So it's just a limitation of the system where it doesn't let you split a gift into different buckets. So we thank you for your support. We thank you for your gifts and are just grateful that you're here today. Let's move now into our time of prayer, and as we do that, I'll invite those who are uh, joining us online, those who are here in this space, I'll give you, um, open up some room in our prayers for you to be able to lift up names and concerns that you have. I do encourage you, if you're online, just to share in the uh, comment section. If you share just first names only, please. Let's take a few moments and just be in silence as we go to God in prayer. Gracious God, for the way that you love us, we thank you. For the way that you have called us to you, we thank you. For the name of Jesus that is above all names. For his love, for his forgiveness, for the things that he did, the things that he taught, for the challenge that he places upon our lives to live as he lived, we give you thanks today. We know that as we are gathered here, we, uh, we come with hearts that are full of joy for things that we have experienced this week. Maybe good things that are happening in our families, um, the achievements of our kids or our grandkids, or something good that happened at work, just for the beauty of this day and this season of the year. We give you thanks for all of that, family and friends, and for the blessings of love and companionship and care and forgiveness that we experience. We give you thanks. We know, too, as we are gathered, that there are people that we're, that we're worried about. And even in this moment, we have a hard time being able to turn those concerns over to you. But we come in prayer knowing that you have given us this great privilege of being able to lift these names, to lay them at your feet and know that you care in far more wise ways for all those who are on our hearts than we ever could. And so I invite you now uh, to lift up names and situations that you're concerned for today, to lay them at God's feet.
God, we give you thanks for those names that we have raised, and we give you thanks for those who are being raised online today. And just pray that you would surround all of those with your love, with your grace, with everything that they need. That they might be reminded continually of your love and your presence with them. God, we look out over the world and we know that there are concerns that we have for our neighbors. We pray particularly for those in Ukraine who are being bombarded day by day, those who have fled their homes, those who have fled to other countries, those who are concerned for their families. God, we just pray for an end to violence. We pray for an end to war. We pray that your, that your peace might descend upon the hearts of those who need to be able to make decisions that could turn things in a different direction. And so we pray that today. We pray for peace talks. We pray for change. And we pray that in all of it, that your love would be known. God, we give you thanks for this day, and we give you thanks for the people who are seated to our right and to our left. We give you thanks for this church and its mission, and for the church in every place. We pray that you might help us to live true to the things that Jesus taught us, that you might help us to reach out in love and concern for the world. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hi. <laughs> I now invite you to stand with us as you're able. We're going to sing How Great Thou Art.
road today seeking God's help to not let exhaustion rule our decisions. Pray that we may live more into who God calls us to be today than yesterday. Go in peace and go with God. Amen.